Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 24, Uncommon Bond. Yeah, Bond isn't that common. I mean, he goes around saving the world. Oh, wait, we're talking about My Little Pony. I I'm sorry. Yeah. What would an uncommon bond be? Because commonly bonds are issued by companies or governments. Maybe one for a higher amount or a lower amount? Perhaps. But on to My Little Pony, and I almost called the guy Star Swirl the Bearded. <laughs> no, that, that was Sunburst. It's because of being at the end of the episode. Spoilers, in case you can't tell. Since we're discussing the episode. It says in the title we're discussing the episode. Yeah, and I've been going with episode titles because it was just easier. I was like, oh, that's already written for me. I don't have to be creative at all. <laughs> also, I think it's helping with clicks, so. Woohoo! <laughs> Please, come in further. Enter our madness. Enjoy. If you do like our madness, please click the subscribe button. Thank you! Now onto the episode. So, Starlight Glimmer is overly excited that her friend, Sunburst, is coming to town. Woohoo! I love Sunburst. He's a crazy guy. I'd have fun with him. I would love to go antiquing with him because he's one of those people who actually knows what the heck the stuff is. Yeah, I just look and go, oh, that looks neat. Yeah, I love looking at old stuff. Especially when I'm comparing it to new stuff like, look at the size of this Game Boy. Sir, what's a Game Boy? <laughs> True story. The little kid goes, what are those? I go, they're Game Boy games. What's a Game Boy? And I turned to Ember. I'm not that old, am I? <laughs> At that particular moment, I felt ancient. Yeah, and I was like, no, no. Would you like your insure now? <laughs> oh. oh. Also, I didn't actually do that. <laughs> yes, but it was a nice thing to add on here. But yeah, a little overexcited to see Sunburst and the classic joke of, so when is the 12.30 train getting here? Uh, 12.30? It's kind of in the name that the noon train should get here at noon. Also, I would have thought the train coming from the Crystal Empire would have looked like the Crystal Empire p train and not the Ponyville Express. Well, the Ponyville Express does go to the Crystalville. Crystalville? Crystalville. That's a town between Ponyville and the Crystal Empire. That Lux just made up? Yes. <laughs> yes, but you would think since Sunburst was coming from the Crystal Empire that he would be more likely to be on the Crystal Empire train because the train is going to dock at its city of origin because in order for him to take the Ponyville train, the Ponyville train has to have made a trip out to the Crystal Empire first because it would normally be in Ponyville until it's en route to another location. But on to the actual meat of the episode where Starlight realizes that a friend she hasn't seen in years is different than she remembers. Which is a classic kid storyline. Oh, these two friends who haven't seen each other for a while. They had so much in common when they were younger. And they both find out that we don't have anything in common anymore. And I can't remember how that usually ends, because I usually didn't watch those kind of episodes. I do remember an episode of Disney's Pepper Ann that dealt with the issue, but I don't remember the resolution of the episode. Apparently neither of us do, because I watched that show as well, and I don't remember an episode like that, but I also remember an episode like this being in Recess, and I don't remember the resolution either. I don't remember it in Recess, and I think I watched Recess more than I watched Pepper Ann. Of course, there's several other children's shows, because it's a, another kind of trope storyline to go from, another standard one to go back to, and yes, we need to do this one. But I don't actually ever remember the standard resolution to this one. Did the friends, like, make up, or do they, like, go, yeah... No, I'm pretty sure the standard thing would be like they make up somehow and find out something new. And find a new way to bond. Though what's really interesting this episode is how they found out they were so different. But then you think about it for a moment and you go, wait a minute, they're a lot alike. I mean, look at the people that Sunburst made friends with so easily. Who did they also make friends with really easily? Starlight. So... Yes, while your interests may not be lining up perfectly anymore, apparently your basic personality traits and nature are similar enough that you are having fun with and getting along with the same types of people. 
and she just wasn't seeing that because she was so focused on this old stuff we used to love to do, right? And she couldn't get past that and start enjoying her friend for who he is now. Also, if you're not into antiquing, it is incredibly boring. So for her to be dragged along on antiquing and then have Twilight actually enjoying it and enjoying it with Sunburst when she thought that she and Sunburst were going to be spending 100% of their time together. So it was less of, oh, hey, my two friends are getting along, which is a whole nother episode trope of this person and this person are both friends with the same person, but they have issues getting along. That's another classic trope that we've had handled in previous episodes. You know, with Dragonlord Ember, Thorax, and Spike, and going further back when Maud Pie was first introduced, and Pinkie Pie trying to get Maud and her friends to all get along. So here we have the opposite of two different sets of friends meeting each other and instantly meshing, and the connecting friend, the one who is kind of the reason they've met and have spent any time together, is feeling left out. And speaking of Mod Pie, she's in this episode. Yes. I love Mod Pie. Not in that way, you shippers. <laughs> she's just an awesome character, and I really love her deadpanness. Her dead. How would you say that? Am I using that term correctly? She's very deadpan, and I love it. Yes, in, in a show that's constantly improving its expressions and its facial work, her deadpan remains very stoic. Mm hmm I love rocks. Rocks are awesome. Meet Boulder. We didn't see Boulder this episode, did we? No, we did not. I think it's because Maude is only mildly present in the episode overall. She's in one, two, three scenes? Maybe four? Because I remember when she meets him, when she's in the board game, and at the end when she's getting pulled into the hug. Well, there was also the part where Sunburst came back and talked to each of mm. Starlight's friends. Though speaking of that scene, it would be terrifying if Maud used the mirror pool. I mean, the Pinkie Pies were enough, but this would be a whole different of, whoa, stoic everywhere. I don't know if emotions are right anymore. <laughs> also, Starlight, unsealing the mirror pool. Seriously? Well, she wanted something really magically exciting to pull Sunburst back into what she thought they should be doing. That's another thing. Is she got stuck a lot on what she thought they should be doing instead of seeing what they actually should be doing. Like, you've got these friends. You have a lot in common, both of you, with them. Use that. Talk about those things. Enjoy the moment with your friends talking about things because they're having fun. Let yourself have fun too. You are just mentally blocking yourself from having fun because you're like, this is not the type of fun I wanted. Instead of thinking that, thinking, oh, I'm here with my friend who I enjoy being with. Let's have fun together doing what is fun right in front of me. You've had fun doing this before except for the antiquing. Because other things she's obviously done with Trixie and Maud, she just sits around Maud and talks with her. And Maud probably does rock stuff around her. And they probably talk a bit about rocks and comedy and kites and just enjoy the companionship of each other's company because you don't always have to have words. She just couldn't let herself enjoy the moment because of what she had in her head. It was just so psychologically stuck on... We can't have fun unless it's these things we used to have fun at. And because I knew you when we were both young, therefore I know you best and I'm your best friend and you came to spend time with me. So if it's not just you and I alone together, cue the Lion King music, then it's not fun because it's not what I wanted and it's not what I planned on. I didn't really have any problems with this episode though. It's just we're talking about this because we're like, hmm, interesting. And we're trying to go over the psychology of what was going on, armchair psychology, I know, of what was in her head and what was getting her stuck. Was there any problems with the story? Because you look at it a whole lot closer than I do. So shall we go into your nitpicks? Well, they kind of overplayed her excitedness at the beginning. If you look at 
when she first met Sunburst and the Crystal Empire as adults, she was more awkward about it and was worried about reconnecting. And she learned things about him that were different than what she thought from his childhood because she thought he was this amazingly powerful unicorn where he's an amazingly knowledgeable unicorn, but his actual levels of magic are much lower. So she's already had the experience that the foal from her childhood was not the same as the adult. She's already had that experience. So in a way, that portion of it is a little overplayed. The overall concept of being jealous that your friends are friends with each other and that what you thought was going to be alone time turned out not to be is a reasonable story plot. And we did the same thing with Twilight and Cadence with Discord horning in on them, but that wasn't all friends being friends, that was Discord being a jerk. He does that a lot. Yes, but this was all friends being friends. And normally the issue is the opposite, that old friends and new friends have trouble meshing in the trope storyline. And in the trope storyline of the old friends reconnecting, it's them finding out that they have nothing in common anymore. It's not them meshing well with your new friends. So they did some variations on the trope. I enjoyed this episode a whole lot more than the previous one. And there was nothing about it that really bugged me. The only thing that I think was also a little overdone is Twilight getting overly excited and flipping the board. Because it's really not that big of a thing. The piece drops into the bottom of the board. Big whoop. Yes. When you're a kid, that's kind of cool. You're an adult, you're an alicorn, and you lost control of your magic over this? That was completely unnecessary and felt very out of character. I know it was for the joke, and it was kind of cute, but... Which was the joke. Yeah, and we're still showing growth with Starlight because her tendency tends to be to go for a magical answer. Which he didn't immediately jump to until Twilight brought up. That this was one of the things that you still had in common was magic. And so she went and she made up a spell. But instead of making a spell to control someone or to control herself, she basically made a nostalgia spell because she was trying to get Sunburst to remember everything from when they were foals. So she was dwelling so much on the past of their childhood and what they used to do together that she missed what they could be doing together as adults. It also ties back to another episode where Rarity comes back to visit Sweetie Belle and the whole, well, I'm not interested in these things anymore and how they summarize it with their client and her dog, how she keeps going puppy, puppy, puppy. No, well, do you still play with the same toys? You know, your puppy is grown up. He wants to do different things. People change. Even when you're an adult, your tastes change over time. Like I used to like this show, but I don't like it anymore. And not just because of the show changing, but because you've changed and your tastes have changed. Like, I've watched a show, really enjoyed it, and then I went on to a different show, and then I came back to that show and went, you know, I don't like this show as much as I used to. And it's because my taste changed because something about the new show is satisfying me more than the old show. Yeah, and things happen, but people also tend to lock certain traits with a person, and that tends to be... In their image of that person and that image is very difficult to change and a lot of times people are not willing to accept that the image they have of a person does not match the reality and Starlight was so desperately clinging to what they had in common in the past even though they've already reconnected she's still dwelling on their past as if she hasn't seen him since she was a foal. I think this also goes around to the fact that She's been longer now as this good version of herself that she is now feeling more comfortable with really doing things with the people she used to connect with in the past. And I think when she reconnected with Sunburst, 
it was still on that early phase of I'm a good guy. So she was still feeling guilty about that compared to now when she's feeling more like I can be this person. I am this person. I am a good person. I want to help people. So she may be trying to go into the past because back in the past, especially at that time, she was still a good person. And he was the last person she was with before she snapped. Yes, but it was him getting his cutie mark and going off to unicorn school that made her snap. Which just seems kind of awkward, you know, altogether. Yeah, there was a wonderful scene where he was basically having a wonderful crush on Twilight. That could really, really get up her nerves. Especially since he's like, next morning, I am going to make sure you do not see Twilight. Yes, and then another one of those pony jokes of, oh, I still need to get dressed. Yes, Sunburst design has him with a wizardly robe, but ponies have always been clothing optional. So having another nudity type joke in the series, because they did it before with Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash, and this one is much more risque because it's male-female. There was also that one time where they were getting ready for the Grand Galloping Gala and Spike was in the room and where already goes, you need to leave now, Spike. We're going to get dressed and stuff like that. And Applejack goes, we're always naked, basically. <laughs> we don't wear clothes usually. Yes, yeah, so it's really playing more to a human audience. And I specifically bring up the Fluttershy Rainbow Dash one because it was also in bed. And she gets all flushed and flustered. It was a nice episode. There wasn't anything that really rubbed us the wrong way. The characters were handled well. There were a little hiccups, but there are always a little hiccups. Much minor compared to other things in the season, like the previous episode. That was much more painful, and I still am not sure fully about the resolution. Yes, it was nice. All of us can do something together. But did it have to be the game? It seemed a little too much of putting focus on that nostalgic thing, especially when Sember said he didn't want to play. Now, obviously, part of that not wanting to play is because Starlight's spell did a replica of the house and turned him back into a foal. And honestly, at that part, I thought maybe they were going to be stuck like that. That when she turned them back into foals, she didn't have the full magic power. Because they didn't have cutie marks. Hmm. The only thing I thought there is like, yeah, he's not going to feel right about being turned back into a kid before she even... I know it was supposed to be a surprise, but I, I think that's what also upset him. It's like It was like, boom, okay, what the... Yeah, because you don't go casting magic on someone without their permission. Unless it's a healing spell and they're injured and not in condition to be able to respond. You don't go casually casting magic that changes someone's physiological being. Mm -hmm. And I think his saying, I don't want to play, was less about the game and more about what was going on. But his rejoinder at the end where she's like, well, I thought you didn't want to play. His rejoinder was more of a, well, you wanted to, when it should have been more of a, I didn't want to play like that. Because his rephrase basically made it sound like, well, this is something you really wanted to do, so I dragooned, literally, all your friends into helping me set this up. And speaking of that end game, how often is Twilight's castle going to get broken in a non-season finale sort of way? <laughs> Um, this is probably going to be the last time because thanks to that lovely book, the season finale is coming up. Mm -hmm. Well, this is episode 24, and season finales are usually two parts, which would be 25 and 26. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay, is that a journal or a spell book? And what havoc is going to be unleashed? Because Sunburst has the knowledge, but he doesn't have the power. And he's going to be back in the Crystal Empire. So it's like, wait a minute. Crystal Empire, Flurry Heart, Cadence, uh-oh, there are two alicorns this could affect because he has direct access to the royal family because he is the chrysler for Flurry Heart. This is not going to go well because we know what can happen with Star Swirl's spells. Look at Season 3, Magical Mystery Cure. Also, Sasami-chan, no spoilers in the comments, please. Not for the finale. I know we talked a little ahead previously. 
but let's try to be a little more spoiler aware since we are going into the finale. Because I know you've probably already seen it, because the episodes from episode 23 on were leaked. But we have this little difficulty called real world obligations that tend to cut into our time a little bit, so we haven't really been able to watch ahead. Yeah, I've had lots of late nights editing audio after we've done batches of recordings. <laughs> little behind the scenes info there. <laughs> so, shall we wrap things up with our final thoughts in the episode? Mm -hmm. May I go first? It was an enjoyable episode. There was never a point where I was like, ugh, which is basically my statement for the entirety of the previous episode. Like, I like your Pinkie Pie, and there were some good facial expressions and jokes hidden in there. But overall, I was like, really, guys? Really? This episode was like, oh, hmm. all these enjoyable characters, they're all interacting in a nice way. It all makes sense. There's no point where I'm being jarred about the character wouldn't do that. At least not severely. Of course, there's usually little minor things. But overall, I enjoyed the episode. Definitely better than the previous episode. I don't know for certain if it feels that much better just because of where it is in the lineup because we kind of got hit really hard last week with, okay, this just is not working for us at all. So an episode that flows smoothly and has minor hiccups is going to look a lot better by comparison. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's one of the strongest episodes of the season, but the contrast between Uncommon Bond and Secrets and Pies is so great that it automatically nudges Uncommon Bond up higher. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 24, Uncommon Bond. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, share, rewatch, check out other videos, leave a comment. I've been having some nice dialogue in the comments lately. Thank you, everybody. If you enjoy Lux's art, you know, if you're not just listening to the audio and looking at something else. Which is perfectly fine. We understand multitasking. You know, or if you just like to look at his art while it's holding still, you can find it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Google+, Facebook, occasionally Reddit, occasionally Mastodon servers. DeviantArt and Tumblr are probably going to be the most consistent if you want to minimize your browsing. Really enjoy Lux's art and would like some custom digital work of your own? He does take commissions. Please check the link for pricing and availability. Don't have an image in mind, but would like to throw a few bits our way? We have a Patreon and a Coffee. I really would love to figure out if it's Coffee or Kofi. It's spelled Kofi. I know, which is a Steven Universe character. So I kind of like to say Kofi, but it sounds better as Coffee because. Three dollars is about what coffee costs. Yes, and that's what they're kind of going for on their spiel on their website. So we have a Patreon and a coffee slash Kofi. Patreon starts at a dollar, uh, which does include a monthly sketch with voting options. And coffee, if you haven't heard about it, it works in increments of three and is a single transaction as opposed to Patreon, which is default a recurring item. Thank you again for listening.